Good day, everyone. Welcome uh, to this uh, Health Matters podcast by Dr. Fundi. Uh, we're glad that uh, you have joined us once again. Uh, and to those who are new, uh, please, uh, you know, like us, uh, follow us, subscribe. And if you love the content, you know, please share. We'd like to have as many people in South Africa, you know, interacting with our content. We believe uh, we're striving to deliver content that is useful uh, on matters of health. So, uh, but welcome uh, once again, welcome. Uh, I am uh, going to be doing this podcast today um, with my colleague Sipo Masijo. Um, we are going to be discussing an interesting issue, the issue of misuse or abuse of sick leave benefits by employees. Um, you know, those people who follow, uh, you know, the media, they will be aware that this week um, we have actually been hearing about a case between SARS and its employee, Mr. Matebula. Um, you know, a case uh, whereby the employee, you know, phoned in sick um, and, uh, you know, the supervisor later saw the employee uh, being part of a match, uh, you know, uh, EFF match uh, to clicks in Santin. Uh, and obviously um, that then said something is not right uh, and uh, he was charged uh, and uh, dismissed by the employer. It went to CCMA. The employer was found to be on the wrong side uh, but uh, the employer took it to the labor court and then the labor court, uh, it has been found that actually the employer was right to dismiss this guy because he was dishonest. But this is not the only case in South Africa uh, where people are abusing you know, sick leave benefits. There's also a case uh, of Woolworths versus an employee. An employee, again, who called in sick uh, uh, only to be found that uh, he was attending a rugby match, you know, uh, almost an hour away in Port Elizabeth, yet he works uh, in Jeffreys Bay. And in that case, once again, uh, you know, the employee was found to be dishonest. Uh, it went to, you know, the, the employee was dismissed, went to CCMA. CCMA actually found that the dismissal was unfair. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the employer took it up to the labor court. The labor court agreed with CCMA, uh, and then it went to the the labor appeal court. That's where you know the labor appeal court said actually the employer was right to dismiss. So I think the aim of this conversation is really to just say to people, we sometimes don't apply our minds, uh, you know, around matters of sick leave usage, and you know if you are caught uh, in a web of dishonesty in relation to sick leave, it can actually hit you very, very badly. Um, and uh, these two cases, the one from SARS, which is the most recent one, and the previous one of Woolworths, uh, you know, it just shows you that things can go very, very wrong. And when you are dismissed on account of dishonesty, that actually affects you even when you are now looking for new employment because very few employers would like to interact with an employee who was dismissed on account of dishonesty. So uh, it is important that you know, people use their sick leave benefits you know, uh, in a way that is rational, in a way that is responsible, uh, rather... You know, you take annual leave if you've got something that is pressing than to go and fake illness. Uh, otherwise, that can actually be a, a problem. Uh, it may seem like a convenient way to get some time off, but the repercussions of dishonesty in claiming sick leave can actually be far-reaching. Thank you very much, Doc, and uh, good evening and good afternoon to all the Dr. Fundi uh, channel followers, and uh, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. And uh, Doc, uh, there's uh, 
uh, as you were talking about this matter, there's a voice clip or a news clip that I picked up about this particular issue that's yes. uh, that is famous that everybody's talking about at the <laughs> moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know what I mean. Let's take a listen to it. Fourth of November, 2020, SARS employee uh, Beneth Matebula was served with a disciplinary notice in order to answer to allegations of dishonesty. This after he called in sick, only to be seen on television by supervisor at an EFF protest. This was in Sentin. Matebula was found guilty and therefore uh, dismissed on the 24th of March. 2021. Well, Matebula referred his dismissal to the CCMA, where it found that his firing had been substantively unfair. However, the Labour Court has overturned an arbitration ruling uh, that Matebula should keep his job. Well, Labour analyst uh, Tony Healy joining us now. To so, uh, Doc, there you have it. Um, and my first question to you, Doc, is... Um, how big and how bad is this situation where people fake being sick in South Africa at the moment? It's a tsunami. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a tsunami. It's a big problem. There is no employer who can say that they are immune to this problem. Mm. It's a real, real big problem in South Africa. Um, and yes, it differs from sector to sector. You know, some sectors are more uh, affected than others. For example, uh, if we are talking the public sector, um, you know, here I'm talking about government departments and some state-owned enterprises. Because historically, uh, there's been a problem. Uh, you know, historically, there's been a problem uh, whereby the benefits offered in the government sector and even in the uh, you know, parastatals or what we call state-owned enterprises, historically they've had very generous sick leave benefits. Um, although now, because of the Basic Conditions of Employment Act uh, and the policies that then got to be revised, the benefits have since been reduced. Yeah, But uh, some of the people who've been there for quite some time, uh, they still remember the good old days where there was generous sick leave provision. So there's that historical, you know, context, uh, you know, to the government, uh, you know, and the parastatals. Mm. But uh, w generally, you know, experts or people who research matters of sick leave in South Africa, uh, I mean, one of those entities is the, I think is now called Productivity SA. Uh, it used to be called National Productivity Institute. So, um, you know, when one looks at benchmarking and say, what is considered normal and what is considered excessive from an organizational point of view. So in the blue collar workers, you know, type of environment, manufacturing and, and places like those, um, you know, up to 2.5% of employees being absent from work on account of sickness mm -hmm. is, is the benchmark, mm -hmm. up to 2.5. But where you've got white collar workers, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like banking and other financial services, uh, consulting businesses and all of that, it's lower at 1.5%. Mm. But one must be mindful that uh, whilst the, the rate is lower, that's expected, um, when you have one of those people being absent because they earn a lot of money, uh, the cost to the employer is actually quite high. In fact, when we're looking at the cost of sick leave in general, um, it's usually three times the daily salary of a person because it's about uh, the, uh, paying the person who is sick, paying overtime, uh, missed deadlines, and things like that. So uh, the research in this area says the actual cost of being absent from work can be anything from two to three times the daily salary of that employee. Yes. You know, so therefore, uh, it can actually be quite costly. Mm. Uh, it can be quite costly. So, uh, in a short way or in a long way, uh, it's a big problem. Uh, and uh, whether you're in the private sector or in the public sector, the problem is there. Mm. But yes, 
uh, you know, it varies from sector to sector. In the government sector, parastatals, it's not unusual to see 5%, sometimes up to 10% of people being absent from work mm. on account of sickness. Um, you know, and worse, it's the short kind of absences of, you know, one day or two days on a Monday or a Friday, day before public holiday, day after public, you know, holiday. So it is a big problem. And most employers seem to be struggling with getting a hold, you know, in managing this. And this is primarily a, a duty of supervisors and line managers on a day-to-day -day basis supported by HR. But a number of people who are supposed to enforce you know, sick leave policies in companies, uh, you know, I'm talking about these uh, supervisors and the line managers, uh, they tend not to have the courage to do what needs to be done according to the policies. And so, uh, you know, if the managers are not managing the thing, and then the, you know, the employees will continue to abuse. Mm. Why, is it, why is it such a big problem, Doc? Um, is there a reason behind people lying so blatantly about being off? Well, <laughs> <laughs> look, um, to answer you, I think people don't really take seriously uh, that sick note, hmm. uh, you know, as a medical legal document, which, if abused, can actually land them in serious trouble or even in the courts. Hmm. It just sounds so easy that, hey, I know Kinali Papi today. Uh, I'll just go to my doctor down the road. Uh, sometimes, you know, when I was practicing in Port Elizabeth uh, many years ago, uh, somebody would come to you as a doctor on a Thursday, hmm. tell you that, Doc, uh, I've not been to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, but, uh, you know, uh, I want to go to work tomorrow, you know. Mm. And they won't stop there. They will say, Doc, please, man, uh, write as if you saw me on Monday. Yes. Eh? yes. Don't write, was hey, Maburua, yeah. uh, go, you know, Lama Pululapa and FX, you know, uh, if you show that you saw me today, they're not going to pay me for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Yeah. You know? So please, Doc. Now, they are actually trying to coerce you mm. to be part of a lie. And yeah. if you agree to that as a doctor, you are actually putting your license at risk. Mm -hmm. See, So the issue of dishonesty around sick leave uh, you know, benefits and sick leave usage is a prevalent problem. And uh, it's, it, you know, it's a reflection of the levels of dishonesty we have in society. That's why we're battling with corruption you know, in this country. Mm. Uh, things like these, you know, uh, are, are things that are just, uh, you know, people think uh, it's a minor thing. I, I can just decide not to go. I'll just go and talk to a doctor and the doctor. There's also a case uh, there when I was still in PE, a doctor refused to issue a sick note and the patient stabbed the doctor. Hey, man. You know, so there's an element of entitlement. Uh, you know, people don't think there should be consequences. when it, So, it's a reflection of what we see in society. Mm -hmm. yeah. Doc, now, um, is sick note regulated differently in the private sector than in the public sector? Or is it the same across the board? So the law underpinning, you know, the sick leave benefits or mm -hmm. any leave benefits for that matter uh, in South Africa is the Basic Conditions of Employment Act. Mm -hmm. But um, here... Uh, we are fo focusing on sick leave, you know, uh, uh, provisions or, you know, prescripts. Uh, but there are other types of leave. Now, generally in the workplace, you've got what we call scheduled leave and unscheduled leave. So things like annual leave, maternity, study leave are things that are scheduled. So they are never really a problem because there's approval beforehand. Mm. But when it comes to sick leave benefits, uh, it's an unscheduled type of leave. Ideally, it's, uh, it should be unscheduled, meaning you go home and then you wake up, you're not feeling well, you know, it's not planned, but it's amazing. 
the number of people who plan to be sick. <laughs> uh, they plan to be sick so that they can keep their annual leave days, you know, uh, and not use them when they've got some personal matter that they need to deal with. Mm. You know, so um, so the, the act is the same, Section 22 and Section 23 of the Basic Conditions of uh, Employment Act, and uh, it says employees who work five-day week uh, should get a minimum of 30 days in a three-year cycle. Those who work a six-day week should get 36 days in a three-year cycle. Mm. Yeah, that is what... Uh, you know, is in the act. And also employees who are absent for a day or two don't have to bring in certificates. But that problem uh, brings in opportunity of abuse because if I don't have to bring a certificate for one day or two days, mm. then, uh, you know, it, it, it creates a situation. But that was negotiated by the employers and the unions and that's the agreement they came up with. Mm. But uh, to try and deal with the possible abuse of that one day or two days, uh, then there's something called eight-week rule, whereby in an eight-week period, that's a two-month period, you can have more than two occasions of a one-day or two-day absence. Mm. On the third occasion of one-day or two-day absence, the employer is entitled to actually call that employee, counsel them about you know, the trend, and even, you know, uh, have a right to actually tell you, employee, uh, from now onwards, we will demand a sick note because of the trend we have picked up up until we are happy with your attendance. So uh, that's the way of closing that loophole. But uh, a number of line managers and supervisors in most organizations are not courageous enough to implement that eight-week rule. So uh, we see a lot of absence uh, from work and the shorter absences, Monday, Friday, uh, day before public holidays, day after public holidays. Sometimes, uh, you know, the days after payday, mm. you know, because somebody knows who Marshall Nisa <laughs> is there by the gate, and uh, they'll be waiting for their money, so they just don't come to work, you know, on those days. So it is a big problem. Man. Absolutely. Doc, there's a voice note. Uh, let's hear what... I think I didn't answer your question well, though, uh, about, about the difference between public sector and, 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 and yes. the private sector. Yes. In the public sector, government departments, mm. um, when you finish your normal sick leave of 36 days, everyone has got 36 days, even though they work five days a week, mm. um, it's not the end of it. In the private sector, you finish your normal sick leave. If you are sick, it's annual leave or unpaid leave. Okay. Right? That's private sector. Um, unless they've got policies, uh, you know, that they've come up with. But there is no legislative obligation for them to give anything more than that. Mm. In the public sector, um, they have got something called temporary incapacity leave. Meaning, even when you finish your normal sick leave, you still can get additional paid sick leave that is called temporary incapacity leave. And there's no limit as to how much you can have of that for as long as there's justification in terms of medical certificates or medical reports uh, to that. So that's the key difference. Public sector, there's additional uh, temporary incapacity leave, which is basically extra sick leave, mm. which is not the... Uh, you know, in the private sector. And that additional sick leave called temporary incapacity leave in the public sector, uh, it's something that was agreed upon between the public sector unions and the employer. I think it's resolution 7 of 2000 or something like that in the collective bargaining, you know, uh, 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 you know council uh, of the public sector. So uh, it is not a legislated benefit, but it is a benefit that's regulated by a, re a resolution between the employer and, you know, uh, the employees. Mm. Uh, all right, uh, that says a lot. Uh, so there is a bit of a difference. Um, Doc, so there's a guy who's just sent a voice note. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. I think he wants to comment on this topic. If you're absent without a medical certificate for less than three days, you don't require a medical certificate. That means that the employer must still pay you even though you don't have a medical certificate. It must be less than three days, guys. Then you cannot do this 
in the next eight weeks again. So if you do it now without a medical certificate, you cannot do it in the next month again. Eight weeks later only, this can apply again. So no need certificate necessary. You must still get paid even though you don't have a medical certificate. What do you say to that, Doc? Well, um, he, he is, he, I think uh, they, they, it's not exactly 100% what he's saying. Mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, I mentioned that a day's absence or two days' absence, it's a non-certified type of leave. It's allowed. Okay. But it must not happen at more than two occasions. In eight weeks. In an eight-week period. Mm. So once it can happen, twice it can happen in an eight-week period, but not on the third occasion. So what he said there, he's saying uh, it cannot happen uh, until the next eight weeks, no. Okay. It's two occasions maximum in an eight-week period. Mm. So you can have one occasion and another occasion, but on the third occasion, you get called and the employer can counsel you, in fact, must counsel you, uh, and can even instruct you that going forward, uh, up until we are happy with your attendance, you know, so I thought, let me just uh, clarify that. So the eight-week rule, it's about the maximum two occasions. Uh, it's not like one occasion per eight weeks. No, it's not like that. Mm. So whose duty is it uh, to manage the sick leave in the, in the workplace? Well, uh, I think it's everybody's duty. Uh, you know, the employees have got a duty uh, to manage their attendance. But okay, to be much more specific, line managers, supervisors... Uh, is their daily duty supported by HR? Mm. Some managers don't want to do this. Uh, you know, they just want to just outsource it to HR. Mm. But it's actually a function of a line manager to manage work attendance and also, you know, timekeeping. Those two things are not supposed to be managed by HR somewhere there. It's the manager who's supposed to manage that. But a lot of managers uh, lack the courage to actually do this, or they see it as a nuisance function mm. in terms of the things that they're supposed to do on a daily. Mm. Uh, all right, so my next question is, under what circumstances should people bring sick notes? So, um, now, I've already mentioned that under you know two days or less, no sick note. Mm. However, if there is a frequency in an eight-week period, mm. more than two occasions, the employer can demand a sick note. Mm. All right? Number one. Some employers um, on these special days of Monday, Friday, uh, can actually in their policies say, okay, we understand, but if that one day absence is on a Friday mm. or on a Monday or on a day before or after public holiday, we'll demand a sick note. Mm. You know? Um, so that's what other employ employers are doing. But uh, in general two days or less, you shouldn't be bringing a sick note. Mm. But um, if you are absent three days and above, then according to the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, you should be bringing a sick note. Mm. Uh, and so uh, that should be contained in uh, the policy of an organization. And not only that, but also the procedure of how people must uh, then, you know, report their absences uh, and, uh, you know, uh, you know the sick notes that, that must come, who must it be submitted to, by when, you know. So that's, that's the situation. So above three days, everyone. Hmm. Below three days, only if you've, uh, you know, uh, got more than two occasions. Hmm. So, Doc, uh, which healthcare professionals should uh, issue a sick note? Can you go to any... Yeah. So, um, in the South African context, um, healthcare professionals who are certified to diagnose and treat, mm. diagnose and treat, uh, and who belong to the statutory council that is established by an act of parliament, like the HPCSA, 
uh, can issue sick notes, all right? Uh, or the South African Nursing Council. But let me be more specific. So HPCSA registered professionals uh, can issue, uh, you know, uh, sick notes because in terms of their scope of practice, they can diagnose and treat. So medical doctors, dentists, clinical psychologists, you know, allied healthcare professionals, physios, OTs, you know, uh, speech therapists, you know, professions like those, the South African Nursing Council, you know, uh, they can issue. Here, uh, especially those who, are, who have got uh, what we call um, primary healthcare qualification, you know, who work in the clinics out there, they can issue sick notes, all right? Now, uh, in the public sector, when it comes to that temporary incapacity leave I was talking about, uh, they reduce the number of professionals who can issue sick notes. Yeah? Um, only HPCSA registered professionals, uh, you know, medical doctors, dentists, those who can diagnose and treat, uh, including clinical psychologists like Liesl that was here last week, uh, who have got a master's you know, in, uh, in clinical psychology. Mm. So that's it. Uh, not somebody from the nursing council, not somebody from the allied healthcare professionals. Um, and I think I must also mention that uh, not traditional healers, because remember in South <laughs> African context, yeah. uh, we've got traditional healers. Yeah. And some of them, they, they actually believe that they should have the right to issue sick notes. Now, in the South African context, in terms of the law, uh, there are still issues there. I must mention that um, maybe in the near future, traditional healers will be allowed to issue sick notes because there is the Traditional Health Practitioners Act 22 of uh, 2007, which recognizes traditional healers. And based on that, they then came up with an interim statutory body, you know, a, you know, a interim a traditional health practitioners a council. That council was supposed to come up with clear regulations about who must issue sick notes amongst them. You know, who's a GP, who's a specialist amongst them, who's entitled to issue sick notes or not. But unfortunately, the previous interim council, uh, the term ended before they could come up with clarity around these matters. Um, and uh, so there is a new uh, interim council that has just been inaugurated, uh, I think, a few months ago. We hope that they can move with haste so that they can provide clarity. Because up until there, is, there are those regulations, uh, it's going to be difficult for employers to accept sick notes, uh, you know, because everyone who will have to issue the sick notes will have to be registered with that council. Mm. But at this moment, uh, that council has not reached that level. But uh, it doesn't stop uh, some of the traditional healers from <laughs> issuing sick notes and writing it liso. Uh, <laughs> the person has been away for a month or writing umeko, you know, or ifufunyana, uh, things like those. I mean, we do see these sick notes. Yeah. But unfortunately, at this moment, despite them being recognized in terms of the THP Act, you know, 22 of 2007, but the regulations are not yet there. So you can't have you know, uh, the cart before the horse. Yeah. So the regulations must come up. And uh, But I must also say that things on the ground are moving ahead of all of these because there's a case now, Muledi versus Kivitz Kruon, where Kivitz Kruon dismissed an employee uh, who had to go and twasa, uh, you know, and, and um, but in that long drawn-up case, Kivitz Kruon was... Uh, found to be on the wrong, you know, for dismissing. So, uh, basically, the recognition uh, of traditional healers in our constitution and that THP Act uh, is putting pressure on all the stakeholders to get this thing sorted uh, so that there is no more a grey area. But uh, as we speak, 
traditional healers don't have the right to issue signals. Mm, absolutely. Uh, Doc, uh, there's another interesting story about, uh, you spoke about it earlier, the Woolworths case. I want us to listen to the voice clip and uh, and then talk about it a little bit more. And um, let's quickly take a listen to this one, Doc. Yeah. So according to a recent Labour Appeal Court ruling, it seems as if you can be dismissed if you are found gallivanting or entertaining yourself on a day that you're supposed to be on sick leave. So guys, on the 9th of June 2018, you know, a Woolworths employee took out sick leave, saying that he was too ill to go to work, which was only 20 minutes away, but it was later found that he had traveled about an hour from Jeffreys Bay to Port Elizabeth to watch a rugby game with his father. So the gentleman was asked the next day at work, and he admitted that he went to this rugby game. He was charged of a gross misconduct, abuse of sick leave, contravening company policy, and he was dismissed. He went to the CCMA. The CCMA found that the dismissal was both procedurally and substantively unfair because he never lied. He wasn't dishonest when he was asked where he was. He admitted that he went to this game. Therefore, the trust relationship was not broken down. The company went to the Labour Court on review, and the Labour Court said that the dismissal was only substantively unfair because there was no policy which says that when one recovers during the course of the day, they have to go back to work. However, the Labour Appeal Court said that this man was palpably dishonest because he was paid for part of the day, you know, and went to the to the rugby game, and he also didn't say, you know, set a good example to his juniors. So, guys. So there you have it, Doc. Uh, <laughs> what do you make of that story? Well, it's another case, <coughs> you know, of dishonesty. Hmm. Um, what is interesting in both of these cases is that when the employer dismissed the employee, it went to CCMA. Hmm. And in both situations, CCMA uh, actually found in favor of the employees. Hmm. Uh, and it then this feeds... Uh, on the perception that CCMA is always biased towards, you know, employees. There's a perception, right? Uh, I can't say it's the truth, but there is that belief from employers that, uh, you know, there is a bias towards, uh, you know, uh, employees. But that is not what I'm talking about today. So, um, but something that came up, you know, in this case is that... Um, Remember, it, it, it went from CCMA to the Labour Court, right? And then it went to the Labour Appeal Court. Uh, the Labour Appeal Court actually agreed that this person should have been dismissed uh, because of dishonesty. He said he was too ill to perform his duties, yet he travelled more than an hour to support a rapid team and he was going to get paid sick leave. One of the things that was also highlighted in this case was that the lenient approach to dishonesty uh, by, you know, CCMA uh, cannot be justified. Mm. Uh, and they also said the trust relationship between the employee and the employer is actually affected by this, you know, a, a, a level of, 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 of dishonesty. Um, and so, you know... Um, the employee, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 the employee uh, was basically dishonest. Yes, he admitted that I was at the stadium. Yeah. But the bottom line is that for you to have a sick note, a medical certificate, it is when you are medically incapacitated, meaning you are so sick that you cannot perform the physical and the mental duties of your job. Mm. By that I mean, it does not mean if you've got a headache, but you can still do some of your work, you are entitled to a sick note. There must be a level of incapacity. You know, uh, you must be so sick that you can't do your work. Mm. And people don't understand that, mm. you see. So, I mean, you miraculously recover to go and watch a match <laughs> or you miraculously recover to go and do a matolo You know, uh, I mean, that is, that is clear dishonesty. But what is also funny that, uh, you know, um, and they say in the, in the other case, 
is 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 that uh, you know the medical certificate that was used was not very clear now just something i must mention is that when a doctor sees you and they are doubtful about your claim to be sick hmm. the sick note has two parts there's a part that says um as i am informed sipo masiko was suffering from a headache Hi, bro. so <laughs> okay. so so when there's that, that as i am informed the doctor is basically saying i am not going to put my head on the block for this guy i don't know where he was on monday and tuesday uh, but i can say i've seen him today so the employer will then uh, certify today the days before they will not pay for it mm. now in pe they didn't want us to to use that as i am informed because they know that if they see that the employer is not going to pay for it oh. then there is a part that says according to my knowledge okay there if, it's, if the doctor has put that it means the doctor is taking full responsibility of your absence from the day he sees you going forward mm. but if you want him to cover you for days before what we call back dating if he doesn't want to add you he'll just settle the part that says as i'm informed can the employer challenge a sick note sick note and does it have an impact on the doctor himself well um an employer can challenge a sick note and this is something that again line managers supervisors and some some hr people don't understand okay that sick note that is issued by the doctor it's a medical legal document that is supposed to uh, certify that i as dr fundi lenyat hmm. i have seen sipo masiho on this date at this time in this practice i've examined him and i've found him to be medically incapacitated meaning he can't do his work uh, and i am booking him off from today start date to this date all right and then sign put your name in block letters so according to the hpcsa uh, ethical guidelines in 2008 Uh, and in the public sector determination and directive on leave of absence amended uh, june 2014 which is basically the same thing there's about 12 things that a sick note should fulfill to be a valid sick note once again uh, some of the sick notes from the doctors don't even meet the minimum standards as per hpcsa some of the hospitals you know um, in the in the provinces the sick notes don't even meet you know these but that's a different matter but the point is the employer can then look at these 12 things and scrutinize a sick note and if they pick up that uh, you know there's no signature by the doctor there's no block letters you know uh, at the end uh, the date of issue of the sick note is not clear uh, there seems to be things that have been scratched you know uh, the employer has a right to actually say i am not accepting the sick note mm. you know but very few people do that but actually they have got all the right because mm. at the end of the day they are the ones who are paying mm. yeah. what can we learn um, what are the key learnings from the SARS issue and the Woolworths issue well in both situations um, i think they took this whole thing lightly you know the employers the employees okay okay the employees you know because i mean uh, there are many people who get away with abuse of sick leave mm. you know um there's a, there's a saying if you can't beat them join them yeah. you know <laughs> so you know sometimes you are in a team you are the one who's always at work and there are these people that you know are hardly ever at work on mondays and whatever so sometimes other people then decide ah okay they are getting away with it let me also you know uh, there's this match i want to go and watch in in pumalang you know uh, the springboks are, are playing so let me just take the friday off and just you know allege that i'm i'm sick mm. so what we you know we need to learn out of this is that um taking sick leave 
getting that medical legal judgment called the sick, sick note or sick certificate it's a serious thing it can end up in the courts number two you could lose your job if the employer can prove that you were malingering, that is, you were faking illness. Mm. So in both cases, these gentlemen were not sick, mm. but they alleged to be sick only to be shown to be physically strong enough to attend a, a, you know, a, 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 a protest match mm. or to watch a rugby match. So as much as the case is dragged, uh, you know, CCMA agreeing with the employees, uh, but ultimately at a labor court level, you know, the guys were found to have been dishonest. Mm. And that small thing that you thought was just a small anyana thing can actually affect your working career because it reduces your chances of future employment. Because when we employ people, we do checks. We also phone the previous employer and ask what was the reason why you left. And once I hear you left because of dishonesty, mm. I'm not going to touch you, mm. no matter how good you are. Mm. Because in any relationship, trust is at the center. Mm. If I can't trust you as an employee because of what you've done before, what guarantee do I have that you won't do the same here? Mm. So uh, you could actually ruin uh, your working career because you did not think seriously about the consequences of dishonesty. Mm. So I think um, don't do it. It may be easy and tempting to do, but you'd rather take that one day from your annual leave uh, or two days from your annual leave don't fake illness. And the doctors themselves, if they are collaborating with an employee to issue a false sick note, then as an employer, you could actually report that a doctor to the HPCSA and um, you know they can be fined an amount up to about 10,000 rands. In some instances, depending on the you know, severity of the situation, they can even be suspended from you know practicing as you know as medical doctors so this is not a laughing matter this is not something that uh, people should take lightly mm. doc there's one more uh, voice clip uh, there's an employee down in cape town mm. who took it to the next level i want us to listen to this clip and i want to hear your views doc um let's take a listen to this one all right, let's go to this conversation now. A state attorney staff member in Cape Town has reportedly been on sick leave for about seven years now with a full salary and benefits. It's believed that the employee is, is said to be too sick to report for duty, but uh, some of the reports are claiming that uh, some of her colleagues have seen her on holidays and also spotted her shopping. Let's get more details on what exactly is going on here with uh, Ruben Malika, who is uh, the PSA spokesperson. Thank you so much, Ruben for your time this evening. Are these reports true? Seven years sick leave? Uh, uh, good evening, Bongila. Good evening to the US at home. Yes, indeed, uh, it is uh, accurate information that uh, one of the employees who is uh, working in the state at an office has been on quite a number of years uh, on sick leave. Uh, we know very well is that the seven? public services... Yes. Yes, that uh, we know very well that the public service is, is very well regulated um, and in terms of temporary capacity leave, in terms of process how to uh, apply for um, early retirement from the public service. And we also would not forget Section 17, uh, which is an automatic termination of abscondment, that if an employee is absent from work for more than 30 days consecutive in the public service, the employer has got the full right to terminate. But this is a different matter. This is a different matter where this particular member has been, in fact, uh, applying for temporary capacity leave. And we know that in currently main, uh, the public service has got service providers who have to uh, have a duty to look at any application that has been made. And in this case, an application was made. And to date, 
there has not been any outcome. The member went further to request for any retirement. And Doc, this just sounds like <laughs> something that's most likely to happen in government. <laughs> well, um, actually, <laughs> uh, the state attorney's office is a government department. Yes. All right. The matter I spoke about earlier, mm. that in the public sector, they have got additional sick leave, which is called temporary incapacity leave. Yes. Uh, it is something that the employees, uh, it's a benefit that employees get, but it must be justified. Mm. But when you now look at seven years, it is excessive. You know, it is excessive. What that tells me, one, is that in that department, the management of leave leaves a lot to be desired. You know, at some point, you need to then say, is this person a candidate for ill health retirement or not? By the time it gets to around two years, you know, uh, because, for example, if the issue is um, a mental health problem, a psychiatric problem, the general guide is that a person must have been on treatment, optimal treatment, both in terms of medical treatment, that is pharmacotherapy, the drugs, tablets, and also psychotherapy, that combo, for a minimum of two years continuously. And if they have not recovered in that period, uh, then uh, if they have not recovered in that period, then you know, that employee can actually, uh, you know, be taken through an ill health retirement process. Mm. So there is this management policy on incapacity leave and ill health retirement in the public service, yeah? Uh, in fact, he mentioned that the service providers, our company, Proactive Health Solutions, that is sponsoring this show, is one of those five uh, accredited service provider. So I'm very clear about the matter that he's talking about. Mm. So by around two years, a definitive decision should have been taken. And if the employee is not co you know, uh, cooperative about this matter, then uh, the employee relations or labor relations unit within uh, the state attorney's office should have uh, you know, set up what is called an incapacity hearing, whereby the employer... Uh, and the employee, they come and uh, show, you know, uh, whether this employee is incapacitated, the extent of that, and whether there's actually an occupational disability. So it should have been resolved long before. But it is not unique, I must say, <laughs> to this department. Just this week, this week, uh, I was seeing uh, employees from one of the large departments here in Gauteng because we're a service provider to the Gauteng Provincial Government. Mm. One of the large departments, I mean, there, I think there is one employee who had been absent for more than five years. What? Yes, on average, the people are, uh, I'm seeing, I mean, I, I saw 40 people in the last two weeks. These are people who've been absent from work, the majority of them over two years. Just. The question is, where are the managers in terms of managing this? Mm. So uh, now they are bringing them late for us to evaluate them as independent medical cases. So anyway, we're doing that. And most of them, we found that actually uh, they qualify for ill health retirement. So if a decision was taken by year two, it would have saved the government a lot of money. Mm. Uh, and it could have allowed those employees to recuperate from home, uh, get their benefits, and uh, some of them actually, especially those with mental health problems, they do recover and sometimes then come back to ask to be considered for employment. So the point here is I think there's a challenge with sick leave management in this particular department. Or let me even be more specific, management of temporary incapacity leave and ill health retirement. Hence, Mr. Uh, Ruben Maleka from PSA was actually you know, being critical of how this case has been allowed to drag. Mm, mm. Doc, uh, any advice to employers dealing with uh, this issue of sick notes? Uh, what should they know, especially medium to large businesses? Yeah. Uh, unemployment is high, but 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 some can on the other side. You know, yeah, I mean, we've got a, 
it, it, you know, when you are not exposed to this, you won't know about it. But a lot of people out there are looking for work. Mm. And those who have work are actually playing truant. Mm. I'm not saying everybody who takes sick leave is truant. But I must also say the level of opportunistic sick leave usage across different employers in South Africa is very high. Mm. And then when people are caught in the lie, then they cry fouls, unfair dismissal, and all of that. But at the end, the truth, you know, they say lies have got short legs. Yeah. You will be caught out. And when you are caught out, then your chances of future employment is reduced. Mm. Don't do it. It's not worth it. This is now, I'm talking to employees of organizations. Yeah. But for employers, they need to have clear policies. They need to train their supervisors and line managers on those policies and procedures. Mm. And they need to oversee the fact that they are actually implementing these things because uh, they just, you know, don't focus on this matter. It's not their money, but it's the company money. Mm. When you are a manager, you are managing the resources of that organization. So by not effectively managing, uh, getting people to be paid whilst they are at home, and some of them are not sick, or people being absent for seven years, you are costing that employer. And uh, if we want to grow the economy of South Africa, create more jobs, we need to manage this situation mm -hmm. because this is now money down the drain. Remember I said the actual cost of absence through sick leave is three times the direct cost, that is that daily cost of somebody who's not at work. When you put all of this, it's in hundreds of billions that South Africa is losing, paying people who are not sick, who are faking illness, and that money could have been used to develop, you know, or grow those companies and employ more people. So it's got a serious impact on, on productivity, competitiveness of South Africa, and ultimately, you know, the economy of South Africa. So let's all take this matter seriously. Yes, it has taken this case of SARS versus Mr. Matebula and uh, Woolworths versus uh, its, you know, employee in the Eastern Cape, but... It could have been any company. Hmm. Even our company, my company, I've got people that I'm actually taking them through, uh, you know, labor relations processes because they are playing through it. Hmm. 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 Doc, now, um, just my last thoughts. Uh, we've got about a few minutes to go. Um, are, we, are we a sick nation? Like, okay, I hear that you're saying people are playing truant, but is there also some element of... But Bakula, last week we spoke about <laughs> mental illness. Yes. Mental illness, you were showing me a, a front a, page. Of Saturday Star. Of Saturday today. Star. Yes. Where a mental illness is a big problem. It's a big problem. It's a big problem. So, look, um, I must say, I mean, I've been in this space now of employee health and wellness. This is my 23rd year. Mm. And uh, as a component or as a reason for absence, over the past two decades, it has grown to become a big problem. Mm. And now with COVID as well, uh, people are wounded. You know, people are carrying a lot of trauma. Mm. Uh, and then there is the problem of long COVID, which we still need to talk about in one of these days. Mm. Uh, so at a mental health level, that article uh, by by the Saturday Star mm. is actually spot on, you know. Uh, so yeah, our people are sick. Mm. Uh, we have a sick nation. Well, I'm not gonna say we're a sick nation, but a number of people in our nation mm. are actually not well, physically and mentally. Sometimes, secondarily, uh, you know, s secondarily, uh, somebody who's got a, a physical illness gets a mental illness. Others, they've got a mental illness which manifests physically. But bottom line, um, we have serious health problems in South Africa. Uh, that quadruple burden of disease I spoke about in another podcast, mm. uh, issues of um, you know trauma, violent trauma, 
uh, you know, issues around mental health, Poverty. you know, you know, uh, issues around mother and child health, mm. uh, you know, issues of the non-communicable diseases. Kuningi man, kuningi, it's too much. But yeah. that does not mean people must use those trends uh, to actually play through and at work. Mm. But I must also say, not everybody who uses a sick leave is actually abusing it. It's a minority, let's say a 20% of people, you know, 80% of people who are working don't abuse their sick leave. Mm. So that's what we have seen. But the impact of those 20% can become big in terms of cost to employers, lost productivity, and all of those kind of things. Mm. Yeah. Doc, we've come to the end of the show. Maybe your last closing comments before we hit uh, an hour of uh, broadcasting. Yeah. Well, um, my last comment really is to urge people who are watching uh, this podcast to please subscribe on our YouTube channel, uh, to please uh, you know, like our podcast, to please share, because we believe we are sharing good content that you're not going to get anywhere. Mm. So um, I think that's my plea. Mm. And uh, we appreciate your support. And we will continue to bring in content uh, that is you know, of an interesting nature. Mm. And they must engage as well. They must engage, yes. Yes, yeah. they must engage. You know, on those platforms, YouTube, mm. uh, there's comment section there. Mm. Please use those because we, w we check those so that we can improve or find ways of getting back to you to answer some of the questions that you might have after listening or watching this show. Mm. Dr. Fundi, this has been amazing. I've learned a lot. Thank you very much for uh, an informative show. Yeah, so, you know, guys, uh, if you also do the one day or two days, uh, <laughs> I've got ways of policing you. <laughs> we'll come to you for a sick note. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, I will not take the one, uh, you know, from what's this place now, Kotropo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but more uh, Mayfair, those kind of oh, places. Oh, Fortsburg, yeah. Kubo Fortsburg, you know. Uh, yeah, no. Kuna le mifiri firi yana. Yeah, I won't take the signals <laughs> from there. Uh, right, but otherwise, you know, man, it was an enjoyable conversation, and uh, we look forward to more content. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much, Doc. Thank you very much, and thank you to everybody who is watching this podcast. Absolutely. We out. Mm.